This short video will help you format your paper in MLA style and formatting for the Microsoft Word word processing program. So to get started, the first thing that you have to do is pull out your handbook, Rules for Writers. This is your guide for how you're going to format, how you're going to cite, and any kind of grammar issues that you need. It's a reference book, so have it by your side while you're writing so that you can double check as you go. The image on the screen right now, what you're going to notice is this is kind of a visual of what an MLA formatted paper should look like. There's a couple things to pay attention to. First of all, everything is double spaced. There are no single spaces at all in an MLA formatted text. And there's also no extra spaces. Even when you look at the title, there's no extra space around it. The other thing that you should notice is that the margins are all one inch margins. So that if you have margins that are more than one inch, you need to make sure that you correct that because even if you're not intending it to look like you're trying to make your paper longer, that's what it often looks like in the end. Finally, the thing that you want to pay attention to is that there's no cover page in MLA formatting. If you ever take a class in a social science, you may be asked to use APA, in which case you would use a cover page. Again, all that information is right in Rules for Writers. Okay, so let's take a look at how we make our Microsoft Word document fit the MLA formatting instructions. When you open up the Word program, it has lots of different features. And if you're not familiar with these features and you don't feel comfortable with them, I would really suggest you go to the e-learning resources and take a look at some of the tutorials the PGCC provides to help walk you through some of the other features of Microsoft Word. Today, we're just going to focus on how to set up your paper for MLA. So once you have your new document open, the first thing that you're going to do is format it. You never want to start typing and then try to format later because you might miss something and throw your spacing off. So this is the newer version of Microsoft Word. Your version, if it's older, might look a little bit different, but all of the parts are basically there. The first thing that you want to do is go to Layout. Now, Microsoft Word often has the margins, left and right margins, set at one and a quarter as the default setting. You need to check this because, as I said before, if you're turning in a paper that has larger margins, it's going to look like you're trying to make your paper longer than it actually is, even if it's just unintentional. So you can go ahead and set the margins to one inch. Now, document elements is where you're going to find your header and your footer and your page number information. So if you click on header, it'll bring up a whole menu of different headers. You really don't need to use any of these. Instead, just double click up at the top of the page, right in this area, and the header will open. Now, in your header, this is where you're going to be putting your page number. These little lines here are called the justification buttons. You want to pick the one that's a line text right. And then you're going to type in your last name with a space after it. Once you have your last name typed in, you can add your page numbers. Again, go back to Document Elements and click on the button that says Page Numbers. The other way that you can find page numbers is in the Insert menu. So if you click Insert Page Numbers, it will bring up for you the page number menu. Make sure that it's aligned right so that it will be up in the same corner as your last name and you want the number shown on the first page. Click OK and that'll put the page number in. Now it's really important that you put page numbers and your last name in the header because when you do this it'll actually make it only a half an inch margin which is what you need instead of a full inch. The other thing is if you just type the numbers in yourself what will happen is every single page will just have the number one on it. So rather than manually typing the numbers for the pages make sure that you use the page number feature. When you're done with that, you can go ahead and close the header and get started with everything else. Now, MLA format is double spaced. 
So if you go to Format, and then Paragraph, you can check the spacing. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that the spacing before and after lines is at zero points. Some Microsoft Word documents have this set at like 10 point or 5 point spacing, which means that in between your paragraphs you're going to have a weird space. So make sure that the spacing before and after paragraphs is set to zero. Line spacing should simply be double, and you don't have to worry about this at at all. So line spacing double, spacing before and after, zero point. Then you click OK. Now you're ready to type. The first thing that you put on your paper, of course, is your name. You hit return once, and then you're going to put down your professor's name. You're going to do this because if your paper gets misplaced or if you have to turn it in, um, for instance, in a mailbox, this ensures that if it gets lost, it can be returned to the correct professor. Then you need to type your class number. Our class is English 1010. And then tell me which section you're in so that I can make sure that I get you into the right class. Hit return once more. And then you're going to put in the date. The date for MLA formatting is always done in the European style. For instance, the first of January 2014 would be the way that you write that date. Hit return one more time and then it's time to do your title. So for your title, go back up to the home page and we're going to use those justification buttons again. The title is always centered and you don't want to hit the tab key or the space bar to center your title. You want to actually just use the little button to center the text. Title words are always capitalized. And never in all caps. Now the thing about the title is it should not be underlined, it should not be in bold, it should not be in any other font. It should just be in plain text with capitalized words. Hit return once more. And then you have to go back up to the justification buttons and align text left. Now, really quickly, these little buttons up here, it's really important that you align text left and not justify text. If you justify text, this means that both the left margin and the right margin will be nice and straight and clean, like a newspaper article. The problem with that is that it will put weird spaces between your words inside the lines. So you always want to justify your text to the left. That means that the right margin is going to be jagged. The lines will be different lengths. Um, but the left margin is going to be straight. Okay, so you're ready to type. Remember, in an academic essay, you have to indent. So the first thing you're going to do is hit the tab key. So as you can see, the body of your essay is going to be just plain typed. You're not going to put any extra spaces between your paragraphs. You're not going to put any double tabs or any double indents at the beginning of your paragraphs. It's much better to use the tab key on your keyboard than to hit the space bar in order to indent because that ensures, as you can see here, that the paragraphs will always be aligned and you won't have to worry about counting spaces. When you're done with your essay, eventually you're going to have to do a Works Cited page. Now a lot of people will just hit the return key until they get to the next page. But that's not really the best way to do your Works Cited page because if you make any changes at all during revision, 
to the text of your essay, it's going to change where the top of your Works Cited page begins. What you actually should do to start a Works Cited page is insert what's called a page break. So if you go to Insert, Break, Page Break, and you click it, what this will do is jump the cursor down to the next new page. Now, no matter what you do to the page up here above, this page will always start fresh and new. So you could type, for instance, six more pages up here, and this page after where you put the break will always be a brand new page at the top of the page. So once you have the page break, you go back up here to the justification tabs and you center justify. Works Cited is the title of your bibliography or your citation page. You capitalize the word works and make sure it's plural because you always have more than one works and then cite it. Hit return and then make sure that you unjustify it. And then the first entry for your Works Cited is going to go on the very, very next line without any extra spacing. Now a couple things that you should notice is that here, the page number has automatically counted up. And what I'm going to show you is even if we keep returning down this page onto the next page, the Works Cited page remains on its own page. So that's it. That's all you need to know to set up your paper in MLA formatting. Remember, do the formatting before you get started because once you start typing, it's much harder to go in and re-space everything or set margins without kind of messing up the other spacing. If you have questions about the formatting, make sure that you're consulting your Rules for Writers handbook or asking me in class or online.